So you've probably noticed by now, but there are so many holidays this time of year. Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Yule, the list goes on. So what is it about midwinter that inspires us to celebrate so many different holidays? That's what we're going to talk about in this week's episode of The Folklore Tree. There's loads of reasons for the season. Jesus is only one. So before we talk about midwinter holidays specifically, let's talk a little bit about holidays in general first. Holidays are generally defined as a socially recognized day or period of days in which an important event or person is celebrated. Holidays fall under the genre of custom in folklore studies, which we discussed a little bit in my video about genres, and can be religious or secular in nature, or both. Holidays are pretty much always calendrical, they take place every year at a specific time, and are characterized as rites of intensification. Rites of intensification are pretty much exactly what they sound like. They're rituals that intensify feeling of community among participants and help keep the bonds between group members strong. Well, until that one eccentric family member indulges just a little bit too much during a family gathering anyway. So, on to midwinter holidays. People have been having midwinter celebrations for a very long time. Christmas has been celebrated since the 4th century ACE and is made up of a mishmash of a bunch of even older traditions. In fact, one of the major reasons that religious leaders in Rome decided in the 4th century to celebrate Christmas on December the 25th, even though nobody really knows when Christ was actually born, is because it coincided so nicely with so many other midwinter festivals. Roman Saturnalia, Persian Sol Invictus, the various incarnations of Yule, and who knows how many other European midwinter traditions that took place all around the same time. That is to say, between the winter solstice and early January during the darkest part of the year. Though only a few hundred years ago in Europe, the Christmas season would start as early as November 11th. So think about that before you start complaining about how early people break out the lights and ornaments these days. The imagery and symbolism associated with various midwinter holidays is also very similar. Evergreens and wreaths, for example, are often associated with life and rebirth because they stay green all year round. And candles, whether they're on a Christmas tree, a Hanukkah menorah, or a Kwanzaa candelabra, act as a light in the dark and represent the impending return of the sun after the winter solstice. The act of burning a Yule log throughout the night in certain Scandinavian festivals has a similar significance. Some of these practices also commemorate significant events in a group's cultural or religious history. The lighting of the candles on the menorah during Hanukkah, for example, commemorates a miraculous event involving a lamp that burned for eight days without fuel, hence the eight candles. Now compared to some of the celebrations I've talked about so far, Kwanzaa is practically a baby holiday. And no, not a holiday for babies, but a holiday that is extremely new in comparison. Kwanzaa was first established in 1966 by Dr. Maulana Ron Kalenga. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. To be a midwinter holiday that's based on various African traditions. The word Kwanzaa actually comes from Swahili and means first fruits. It's derived primarily from African harvest traditions, but it also borrows from other festival of light traditions like Christmas and Hanukkah. The seven candles on the candelabra represent the seven different principles. Unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. Children are supposed to ask their parents about each principle before the corresponding candle is lit, which helps ensure that group values are actively taught to each new generation. It also makes Kwanzaa a really great example of those rites of intensification I talked about earlier. The exchange of gifts and the sharing of meals that characterize a variety of midwinter traditions are also major community builders. I also mentioned earlier that holidays can be celebrated as both religious and secular. Christmas is a prime example of this phenomenon, especially when you take commercialization and nationalization into account. Jack Santino suggests that much of the secularization of holidays like Christmas is a result of nationalization, that is to say the appropriation of a holiday by a national government in order to build a greater sense of national identity among its citizens. Thanksgiving is probably the most famous example in both America and Canada, especially since it's not strictly rooted in religion to begin with. Now because Christmas in particular is celebrated as both religious and non-religious, believers and non-believers may find themselves in conflict due to their differing values. However, it's important to remember that just because people might celebrate the same holiday for different reasons, it doesn't make one or the other's traditions more or less valid. Secular Christmas is just as valuable as religious Christmas, okay? So no getting into fights in the comments. So that's all I've got for you today. I hope you all have a very happy holidays, whatever you may be celebrating, and I will see you in a couple of weeks when I get back from my own holidays. Now this has been an episode of the Folklore Tree. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.